Hi guys! I bet you all seen that bout with the gloves thing at least a few times in your life. That savage rhapsody in a form of a civilized boxing match. Unfortunately, not many of us know how sad, tragic and ugly a boxing match can turn. So today you will hear 10 unfortunate episodes from a history of glorious boxing game. A superstar from South Korea, Kim Dak-koo, is one of the saddest examples in the boxing history of how dangerous and cruel the sport can be. Kim Dak-koo was working very hard throughout his career. And finally he got the chance to meet an absolute champion, Ray Mancini. After a fatal right hook, Kim suffered a severe brain damage and died a few days later. Three months later, Kim's mother committed a suicide. Despite the fact that Panama Lewis is a very talented world-famous boxing coach, he wouldn't refuse using foul methods and playing a dirty game to win the match. The most famous case and when his protege Lewis Resto was fighting Billy Collins Jr. Lewis knew there was no way his fighter could win the match, so he decided to remove part of the filling from the glove. So as a result, Collins Jr. suffered serious injuries throughout the match. He couldn't continue his boxing career and died 10 months later in a car crash. Many people believe that he suffered severe depression which resulted in a suicide. Louis Resto and his coach were convicted to 2.5 years of imprisonment and a lifelong suspension from participating in boxing matches. Tyson was leading the fight and after a few rounds he became ravenous and hungry for the human flesh. Mad that he couldn't knock Halifield out, in the third round Crazy Tyson bit off a piece of his opponent's ear and spit it on the ring. Against all odds, the judge continued the match. Nevertheless, Tyson was suspended for his unconventional methods. Jim Norris is a corrupted fella to the tips of his toes. He was organizing match fixings including the Jake LaMotta vs Billy Fox and Harry Thompson vs Max Schmeling fights. All of that was shown on a national TV. Moreover, Norris managed to fix up fights some boxers didn't even want it to be a part of. IBF President Bob Lee Sr. The sanctioning body of International Boxing Federation has been convicted of giving a subjective criterion ratings. It became clear when the Federation President Bob Lee Sr. was manipulating the system to award and proclaim champions those boxers whose patrons gave the biggest bribes. Referee Richard Still It is always fascinating when the top champions go head to head. People were very excited when the Olympic champion Meldrick Taylor was up against an undoubted leader Julio Cesar Chavez. Despite the fact that Taylor was dominant most of the match and stood up right after the knockdown, referee Richard still decided to end the match two seconds earlier and proclaimed Chavez the winner. The Nevada Athletic Commission denounced this decision and referee's career was over. Sonny Liston Back in the 1960s, the name of Sonny Liston was a synonym of corrupted fights. Most famous of all was perhaps the fight against the one and only Muhammad Ali. The footage shows that during the match, Sonny Liston suffered a minor injury. Nevertheless, the judge stopped the fight. Some people suspect that Liston was a part of Mafia family. Don King For as long as three decades, Don King was known as the star in the boxing community. Mostly because of the public relations though. But there's also another point of view. Many boxers, among who are George Foreman, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Larry Holmes and many more, have sued Don King for multiple fraud cases, stealing, breach of contract and bribery. Some even say that Don King was somehow connected with the organized crime cartels. In the 1990s, Andrew Galata was very close to defeating Riddick Bowie, the absolute champion of that time. In his attempt to become the new champion, Andrew Galata started hitting his opponent below the belt. Despite several warnings, Galata continued breaking the rules and Riddick's manhood until he was disqualified. 
James Butler had great potential and was a very promising fighter. Everything could turn out much better for him if it wasn't his unnatural inability to accept defeat. After he lost the fight in 2011, he pretended that he was coming back to the ring to congratulate his opponent. But instead, he broke his jaw in an act of rage. Butler was sent to prison after this accident. But even then, he committed another crime. He killed and then burned the body of boxing analyst Max Kellerman. He was sentenced to 29 years of imprisonment. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.